to you about this, this life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. We have for several years, and I'm quite sure that I didn't introduce the discussion. I'm quite sure your previous pastors have had that conversation with you, talked about and discussed, taught, exhorted and encouraged one another that the chief reason that God leaves us on this earth, there, there are several reasons, but the chief reason after we are brought to faith in Christ is to live a life on mission. This pastor just pointed out, and we would agree with him, that you don't have to be in a conversation very long with someone today, and problems and challenges and hurts and struggles is going to come up. If you're, if you're listening, if you're a good listener, and you're asking, those things are going to come up. It's amazing. If you'll, if you'll be a good listener, people are willing to share the heartaches they have regarding marriage, children, finances, addictions, depressions. These people need hope. And God has left us here because he saved us and introduced us to the blessed hope, Jesus Christ, so that we will cultivate the art of turning conversations from hopelessness to the gospel. And this tool is a great way to do it. You can, uh, when, you, when you picked up your little packet, the packets we received actually had uh, two napkins in it. Napkins with these three circles drawn on it. The point being that you can sit down with somebody at lunch where napkins are brought and you can draw this out on a napkin. It's not the only way you can use it. If you have a smartphone, if you have an iPhone or an Android phone or a tablet, you can download for free. It's in our bulletin. You can download for free this application. And simply touching the screen, it walks you through what we just drew out on our bulletins. So in other words, there's a gospel tool that's been made very uh, efficiently available to us that we can use to encourage each other and help one another to live life on mission. Now, two things I want to point out from our text, and I'm not going to take long today. In John 10, 10, Jesus says that the devil, the thief, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. You, there was a tract that circulated years ago uh, by Campus Crusade, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And there's a lot of truth in, in that. For those who will consider Jesus Christ and the love he has for them, there's truth in that. Because the wonderful plan he has is what Jesus calls living life abundantly. But there's, a, there's another truth before that. <clears throat> and it is that the devil hates you and wants to destroy you. He hates you. He hates your children. He hates your grandchildren. And his only purpose in having dealings with us, even when it seems that he is whispering sweet nothings, is to kill and steal and destroy. It's his mark. Parenthetically, any religion that kills and steals and destroys in the name of a God is simply following the agenda of the devil, the enemy of our souls. Jesus calls him the thief. And so there are two messages here. There, there are two realities you need to know that other people need to know. On the one hand, we are hated by the enemy of our souls. On the other hand, we are loved by our Savior, Jesus Christ. God so loved that he gave Jesus to be the Savior. What do we take away from this? What, what do we need to know as we leave here today? I think it's important for us to do all within our power to turn conversations about problems and challenges into conversations about the good news of Jesus Christ, that is, the gospel. We will make this video clip available on our website if you would like to go there and watch it, download it, have it to go over in your mind. We need to know some things. We need to know that if we'll be good listeners, 
people will unburden on us. It doesn't take long. In fact, sometimes that may be happening to you and you find it a little disconcerting, a little inconvenient because you really weren't <clears throat> engaged for the burden. But when they do, then what they've done is they've thrown the door open to us if we'll be sensitive to talk about good news in a very reasonable, clear, and a meaningful, brief time. But we need to feel some things too. This is not just a routine where we say, okay, folks, we've got it, let's go. I want you to feel encouraged to believe that the practice of this is within our reach of listening to people and turning conversations about problems and hurts, challenges and pains into conversations. It's within our reach through these kinds of tools. And we're going to introduce another one to you in the coming weeks. There'll be a nice uh, support to this matter. Well, what do we do then? If we know something, the scripture says, he who knows to do good and does it not to him is sin. We know what we need to do. We, we should feel this. I hope you do feel this. I hope watching this video a while ago gave you a sense of real encouragement going, wow, that's, that's not a 13-week course. This was put on our plates in six minutes and can be listened to again and again. You might even want to share it with one another. Now let me try this with you. Draw out the three circles until you get comfortable with that. What do we need to do? I'm going to try my best to use this in a conversation at least once a week. Maybe more than that. I find myself sharing the gospel in different ways as I encounter people in the way, but I'm going to intentionally use this at least once a week. I would like to ask you to join me in that. Nobody's going to be checking up on you. No one's going to be grading you down if you don't. But I'm saying if we join one another in that, life on mission, if we're breathing and we're followers of Jesus Christ, he's left us here to be on mission. It's going to mean some things for some people that it won't mean for everyone, but for everyone it will mean that we can seize the opportunity to talk perhaps with, maybe you have grown children who struggle. Maybe you have grandchildren that are growing up who struggle. Maybe you have sisters and brothers, aunts and uncles, perhaps parents, fellow workers. And they need good news. We all need it. We all need to preach the gospel every day to ourselves. But there are people who don't have anybody, quote, preaching the gospel to them in, a, in the very um, positive and effective meaning of that phrase. I want you to join me on this part of the journey. It is the next logical step. If we've covenanted together to provoke one another to be disciples who make disciple makers. If we want to ourselves follow Christ and love God and love others and serve the world, then, <clears throat> then this is a tool that can be used to help us as those who follow Christ. It certainly can be used as a tool to help us to show our love for God and to express our love to others. And I can promise you, you won't serve anybody, anywhere, anything more valuable than the good news of Jesus Christ. So come go with me on this. Let's provoke one another to love and good works in this. Don't assume the people we visit with, not even our little children, understand what's going on. I had someone tell me recently who works regularly with our littlest ones, trying to teach them, encourage them about the, the scripture, how important it is, held it up and said, what is this? And one of the children responded, Jesus. Now it certainly talks about Jesus. Let's not assume anything. Let's take the good news to the youngest, to the oldest, to the nearest, to the farthest. Share the good news with this very simple tool. Three circles. 
God's purpose or his design. Man's brokenness. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Bringing it all back together. Let's pray.